Hi everyone. I uh, accidentally cut myself off in that last video, so all I wanted to do was summarize what was going on. So if you look at what we did, we started off with one initial equilibrium. All right. And that initial equilibrium for me is always going to be labeled point A, and what's so special about it is quantity demand equals quantity supply. Two, there's the change. And in the previous video, it was an increase in government expenditures caused a decrease in national savings, so the supply of loanable funds shifted to the left, and at the initial interest rate, R1, this created a shortage. So in the change step, there's always going to be a shortage or a surplus that gets created. Third is adjustment. So markets are always going to adjust. Right. So in the previous video, there was a shortage, that caused real interest rates to rise because firms that had valuable investment projects that couldn't get funding had an incentive to bid up the real interest rate. They had an incentive to say, well, if you won't loan to me at 5%, how about if you loan to me at 5.5%? And then as the real interest rates started to rise, some firms would say, hey, you know, at higher real interest rates, our investments aren't that great, so we'll do less of it. So quantity of demand fell. And as the real interest rate rose, some uh, households said, you know what, at these higher real interest rates, we'll go ahead and save more. So quantities of, um, so, or so the quantity supplied of loanable funds increased. And gradually, as the real interest rate rose, you eventually returned to the new equilibrium. All right. So it's always this four-step process. That's what you should keep in mind. There's an initial equilibrium, there's a change, markets adjust to it, either the shortage or surplus that gets created in step two, and in step four, you return to your new equilibrium.